All right. Welcome, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us on another one of our Zoom presentations with our amazing summer camps in the USA and Canada. I'm really actually very excited to have a very good and old dear friend of mine, Bev, join me from Camp Homeward Bound. Um, I've known Bev since I actually went to summer camp and uh, she used to come down and hang out with my old camp director. So um, it's been a very long time. So I'm so excited to have you join us, Bev. I love your camp. I love what you do. Um, thank you for jumping on. How are you? I'm doing great, Snow. It's good to be here. It's good to, to be back and see you, even if it's not in person. But you're right. It's been a long, we've had a long journey together, haven't we? <laughs> we have, we have. It, it's it's been it's been amazing. And and uh um and I, I just love um what you do with uh with Camp Homeward Bound. And I'm really excited to actually be joined um here as well by Kieran, um, a fellow Aussie um who has been going to Homeward Bound as well. How are you, Kieran? Yeah, good. Thanks, Snowy. Hi, everyone. Good to see you all. Welcome. Excellent. Well, we're going to um to uh, sort of hit you up in a little bit, Kieran, and ask you a bit about your um, experience at camp and, and from an, an Aussie's point of view. But um, I also want to thank all the Aussies and the Kiwis and all of those internationals that are tuning in to watch us, um, whether it live on our Facebook or uh, on demand later when we record it. Bev, jump in. Tell us about Homeward Bound. Tell us about your camp. Sure. Well, Camp Homeward Bound, um, we're, we're actually the first and the longest running camp that serves specifically children from homeless and domestic violence shelters in New York City. And we are, uh, we serve children from in New York City. There are other camps around the country. Um, uh, our, our camp is 40 years old. Um, our, our focus is really being in a homeless shelter for a child, it takes away, it steals their childhood. They can't have friends over, they're ashamed, they're hiding their identity and that sort of thing. And so we wanted to create a place where they could come and just be themselves and have fun and in a safe place. And um, they don't have any stigmas there. And, and, and just really, we try to have a normal camp experience for these children. Now, given that they, they bring a lot of extra baggage with them. Sometimes they may come with a little day pack, but they come with some emotional baggage from being abused and that sort of thing. So we do have sort of a, 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 um, a trauma informed care uh, focus and that we really work with these kids. We have a high staff to camper ratio so that we can make sure that they succeed in the summer. Um, our kids are nine to 12, 15 years old and um, and it's boys and girls. So we're co-ed. We're not brother, sister. We're just all together. Um, some activities are single gendered and some are, are, are mixed. So definitely. And how long do the kids come to camp for? Sure. They come for, um, we have a hundred kids per session. We're trying to bump that up to 120 now that COVID is not in our rear view mirror, but at least in our side view mirror. So um, we want to, we, we've got a grant to increase. Uh, they come for 16 days at a time. Then we have a two and a half day break and a retraining day and then another group. So we have three sessions throughout the summer. So staff come from like June 20th, approximately there uh, to uh, the 22nd of August. Definitely. Oh, it's amazing. Well, look, you've um, given us one of your videos. So um, I'm going to jump on. And if you can just bear with me for a minute while I share this. Um, I'm, and uh, I'm going to play this video because I think it's pretty um, amazing. So. All camps are special, but Camp Homer Bound is special because of the kids we serve. They come from such troubled backgrounds. They're living in crowded shelters. And when they get off that bus and come out here, it's like stepping into a wonderland. You can see it in their eyes. Some of them have never seen this much space before and they're scared and they don't trust adults, don't even trust other kids sometimes. And as the session goes along and they start to feel safe and comfortable and they we sort of break down some of those barriers and um, you really get to see the, the inner child with, uh, within them. I think what makes Camp Homer Valley so special is 
that the counselors always care for you and you get to be free and have fun. Great way to meet new people. There's lots of fun you meet counselors from all over the world. And they're just like, really cool. Like, they protect us. Like They really, really protect us. It gives them a chance to get their childhood back and have fun and be safe all at the same time. It was me and another counselor speaking to the girl. And she said that she didn't want to be in the dance hall because she didn't know how to dance. And I told her, like, look at me, I can't dance. And I'm like, look at how I dance. And I made a couple of funny moves and it made her feel better. And after a while, she was like, well, I do it better than you. And then after we got inside, she got so excited about dancing that she ended up dancing. And I felt like I made a difference being able to tell her to dance. And she went in and she did what she wanted to do and she ended up feeling better by the time we left. <laughs> Tomorrow she will see me, she will be proud of me. Um, that's pretty cool. I that's a lovely video, Bev. Um, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> it, it it's amazing what you do. Um, Kieran, let's jump to you. Tell us a bit about your experience at Homeward Bound as an international. Um, how how do you find fitting in? And obviously you're working. Um, with such a unique population, um, you know, as an uh, Aussie or coming over, how did you find fitting in? Sure. So um, I actually started at CHB back in 2009, uh, did that for about 10 years. Initially, it just started out as like, a, oh, I don't really know what I want to do after high school type deal. I was fresh out of there. I was 18. Um, university was kind of like, oh, yeah, maybe. So when I saw the advertisement about it, I just sort of went to one of the meetings, um, was quite convinced it was something that I'd like to do as more of a gap year type deal. Um, and I must say, when I was uh, approached by CHB, their assistant director had contacted me at the time and it just sounded, you know, everything you just saw in that video is pretty much exactly how it is. So that was quite good. But um, I had never done anything like this in the past, you know? So for me, just traveling across on my own to the States admittedly was quite daunting. Um, the instructions from CCUSA, though, they were really quite good. So that was a really, that was a nice sort of thing to just have going. And there was obviously the option of meeting up with other internationals or Aussies that were coming across, Kiwis as well, um, just all together at like a hostel so we could all go up together. Uh, so that was actually, it was really interesting to sort of see how it all fit together. And then um, when I got to the camp itself, um, just meeting everyone was so wonderful because they were all so friendly. Everyone was really engaging. You know, they were really interested about me and I'm like, oh, I kind of want to know about you guys instead, you know? Um, and then I met Bev, of course. Uh, and that was, that was quite wonderful. During the staff training, we got a good update on what the kids are sort of like and what we were really in for. And um, sure enough, at the end of that summer, you know, because for me, it was just supposed to be a one-off thing, but then I ended up doing another nine years of it. So it, I just I just couldn't get enough, you know, I was hooked. Um, so I think that in itself sort of says a lot about uh, the experience and what it can really do for you and just honestly, wonderful experience. Yeah. Uh, personally, um, how, how have you grown from working at camp? And do you see some of the campers come back year after year or, or do they kind of transition mm -hmm. through or...? Yeah, so uh, for me personally, uh, it had a lot of growth. I mean, I really sort of found where I was supposed to be. I became uh, a much more confident leader with people because I went from being a counselor to being a unit leader. So, you know, being in charge of uh, a group of staff uh, to becoming a uh, coordinator of all the evening activities and things like that just really got to engage my creativity to becoming an assistant director. So, you know, really working on proper leadership and seeing the admin side of things. Uh, so that was quite, that was quite good, but really helped with the development of leadership. And as for the kids themselves, like um, every year you'd have a handful of them coming back, you know, repeating themselves and such. And it was just really good to see because they'd see you and they'd be like, oh, let's see you're back, which was really cool to sort of get that excitement from them. And you'd remember them as well. So you had that really good rapport. Um, and actually, uh, about midway through my time, we started the uh, counselor and training program. So, you know, we gave kids 
that were you know too old to come back as kids we gave them the opportunity to actually come back and start learning how to be leaders of their own which um you know that was quite spectacular now i've seen um i've seen campers that were like real small and now they're some of our own leadership staff there which is really really cool to see yeah Definitely, definitely. Um, Bev, walk us through a little bit uh, um, about um, a typical day at camp, but maybe even let's roll it back, maybe staff training. I, I know sometimes people might be, um, you know, working with, you know, troubled youth. They're like, oh, I might not have enough experience or, or whatnot. So talk us through what you do to, you know, get everyone prepared for that. Yeah, you know, so I've, I've worked in a couple of for-profit camps as well. So I, I, I think I can fairly, you know, compare the two and, and and ours is a challenging camp in, in that our kids do have these extra emotional needs. So we spend, we have a seven day staff training. And first of all, we start with that and we really give them a good foundation on, uh, we have our philosophy on how to help um, find what triggers children and, and how to work them through that process. Um, and so it, it's a pretty intense uh, staff training, uh, as well as just learning all the fun stuff, because honestly, our most important thing is people coming here have to be playful um, and, and have, know how to have fun and, and be comfortable in camp. So, um, so it, the staff training covers not just behavioral stuff, but also teamwork and, and learning their support system at camp, not just because of the kids, but I think 99% of the staff that come through here would say that, yes, we are a very supportive environment and we've got different levels to help with them. So, so that's what we do during staff training. Um, and then first session, we always call that, we have staff training and that's the real orientation then, but, um, but um, a typical day, um, we, have, we have split uh, meals. Um, so we have youngers eating together and older. So uh, you get up, you either have clean before the meal or after the meal. So it's breakfast and then there's two activity periods in the morning. Those could be any of our activities that we do have swimming. Uh, we also, that they do as a unit. Um, then there we have archery, um, arts and crafts, dance, uh, um, biking, uh, cooking and nutrition, video production. We have a great, awesome music program, which I would say one of our staff that came from CCUSA went back to the Netherlands and had a concert and raised enough money to come and buy elect electronic equipment for us for our, our music program. So that was really pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, and yoga, I, archery, I might have. So they, they will rotate throughout those during the day. So two in the morning, then lunch and a rest hour, then two in the afternoon. Then they have a bunk free time where they could do any craft activity they want, or they might uh, take a walk or could just chill and read books if they want. And then our evenings, uh, well, this was Karen's specialty, but in the evenings we would either have a unit activity, which um, Karen, do you want to talk about some of the, the evening activities that we had? You, you probably could do that much more eloquently than I can, so. <laughs> yeah, sure, no worries. Um, so evening events would sort of be where every single uh, unit would come together and we'd sort of just do like a, a celebration of some kind. I'm quite a nerd. So um, for me, uh, organizing things like Star Wars Day or uh, Superhero Day, that was the way, because for me, it's very important that the kids know about these, very influential. <laughs> um, but we'd also do things like uh, International Day, which was really cool, because that was a chance for all of us internationals to really teach the kids something about where we're from. Um, so like I recall, uh, there was one year where a bunch of the Aussies got together and they just wanted to teach the kids how to do like the nut push and things like that uh, and teach them about like AFL and how that all worked. Um, so yeah, that was kind of, that's kind of the feel. So I try to sort of broaden it out. We do some sporting events, like we had Olympics. Um, I didn't want to keep it too much to the nerd side because if I could have it my way, it would just be nerd <coughs> done straight through. So that's it. Well, and your favorite besides the nerd one was the pirate knight, you know. Um, oh, absolutely. Uh, he was known as uh, Jack Sparrow when he was, and Sparrow comes from that. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we the love other, it. <laughs> the other two things that are really big is I mentioned we have a lot of arts programs and stuff. So we have a big art show on the, on the last day before banquet and then also a talent show, um, which is really awesome because the kids, they might not get along during 
you know, some of the times during the, the session, but when it comes to talent show, everybody's just there cheering one another on and stuff. So it's very special. So, yeah, definitely. Um, now, I obviously uh, mentioned a, a couple of countries. So you recruit um, through CCUSA globally. So lots of internationals, um, but uh, assuming a, a good raft of American staff as well. We, we do start, we, we have campers that are former, former campers that are staff. Uh, last year, my waterfront director was a camper who st uh, started as a camper at seven, learned to swim at camp, learned how to teach swimming at camp, and now he's our waterfront director. Um, we do get, I just hired a, a young woman from, um, from uh, Portland, Oregon, um, but we also really embrace diversity of all types. So we, we try to get staff from six of the seven continents I haven't found any penguins wanting to come our way yet. So, but no, <laughs> but we really, we, we have a very large uh, international population at camp and, and very diverse, both in religious beliefs, racially, ethnically, just all over the place. We just think it's important. One of our kids mentioned that in, in the, the video, you know, they, they get to know people from all over the world and there's something really empowering about that to our kids. So yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, so as a counsellor, um, tell us a bit about, uh, you know, where would they live and, and what's the food like? You know, that's always a question that we get. <laughs> well, so the first one I'm going to say, and, and no one has ever left us because we sleep in platform tents, but they sometimes people say, oh, I don't know if I want to sleep in the platform tent, but they're large. They're 16 by 16. We just have all brand new ones. They're screened in, so they're nice and cozy. Um, our bathrooms have also all been remodeled and they're all adjacent to the cabin, to the tents, and they're, they're very modern single showers, dressing areas. I don't think Kieran has even seen some of those in the last couple of years. We've had some, um, some nice additions. So um, it, it is a rustic environment, but it's, it, it's comfortable. And the kids, they don't even flinch. They just jump right in and, and the staff do as well. Our food... Um, our, my chef actually came through CCUSA as a boating counselor back when I was with uh, Campus Kids, and we found out he could cook, and he's now been my chef for, I think, at least nine years, um, and he is wonderful. Everything is cooked from scratch. He makes his pizza dough from scratch. He makes um, focaccia bread sandwiches from scratch. Um, he makes his own sausage and his own mozzarella, and um, the food is really excellent. Um, uh, we do accommodate almost all um, food uh, specialties, um, whether it's vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, if they have allergies, he's just amazing and that he makes it all work for everyone. Um, we, we have had some staff who are Muslim. We unfortunately can't do challah, but um, we, we do get challah meat for special occasions. Um, it just can't do it every day. Um, and his real specialty is making paella for everybody over a fire. Oh. And the kids all get to come see it be cooked. So um, everyone that walks away, they say two things about our camp. One is there's a special feeling here. And two is this really isn't camp food. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> which we like, which we like. Which we like. Those are two really important things. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, hey, I'm going to jump on because uh, we put together a, a, um, our um, web page uh, for, for Camp Homeward Bound. Um, obviously, for those people that aren't aware, um, how far out in New York City um, uh, is camp? We're only 43 miles from New York City. It takes about an hour by a bus or a train to get to New York City. So we're very, very near. We're in what's called a Harriman Bear Mountain State Park which is 100,000 acres of land. Um, it's, uh, it's a state forest and it's only an hour from New York City. So it's a, it's a really beautiful, beautiful piece of, of property that, that we're located in. Definitely. Um, Councillors, um, you know, you mentioned the two and a half days off um, that they get. I'm assuming like many, you, you get together with the, all the councillors and, you know, you, you head into New York City or, or, or go travelling. Um, do you get time off during the evenings or uh, other breaks during the during the time? No, they, they get um, for each each session, they have two full days off, which are 24 hours. And we, we provide um, vans. Uh, most staff on those stay locally. Some choose to maybe go out to a Hojo's and so they can have a night, you know, away <laughs> um, with uh, really good internet, that sort of thing. Um, but um, 
so they get they get a day off a week during the the session and some evenings off. Uh, most of the time when they do their big traveling, it's it's on those breaks. So we get them to New York City and back out. We take them in on a bus and bring them back out if they want to go that direction on their break. And usually one break is spent on, in New York City um, and Coney Island and all the things, fun things around there. And then sometimes people choose to go. It's feasible. They go to Philadelphia, to DC, uh, to Boston. Um, and there's always a group that wants to go to the Jersey Shore. So they go down and try to find Snooky. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so they, so when, and we try to, well, they, they organize themselves on those. We get them to New York and then all those things are just a short, a reasonable bus ride away. So. Yeah, yeah, quite, quite, uh, quite good to and easy to get out. Um, yeah. In terms of the the jobs and and the roles that you're hiring for, um, you know, we do get people going, oh gosh, I I may not never have taught this before, but you know, I've done it throughout high school. I might do my own arts and crafts. I make my own jewelry. Um, you know, I, I do my own photography. You know, um, do they need to have taught before? Tell us a bit about what you look for in terms of skill sets. So it, it, they either it's really we we try to get people who have done some teaching or helping teaching in, in the different areas however uh the other thing is if they're very proficient say they they're an avid bike rider and they can teach beginners biking or um a photographer and they you know they could teach photography not everyone has taught uh that specific activity um officially before um, usually some kind of teaching experience is really helpful. That's, I mean, we want to go for the highest, um, you know, bar that we can, but we, we do in, in many of the areas. The, the exception is archery. Um, they have to have some experience. Uh, they don't have to have taught. We have a certification course that we teach, at, that we do at camp. Uh, obviously lifeguards and, you know, that's a high commodity and, um, you know, we, we really value our, our Australian uh, and New Zealand uh, lifeguards. Uh, you do not have to be certified. We do a certifica certification class at camp. Um, but most of the other areas, um, a good strong knowledge is also um, just fine. I mean, cooking and nutrition, most people don't teach a cooking class, but if you've been cooking at home or that's a, a hobby of yours, you know, that, that, that would work. Definitely, definitely. And um, up on the screen, sort of just a, a, a raft of those activities that, that you do do at camp. Um, I, I guess uh, in terms of other elements, uh, you know, obviously, you know, COVID's still around. Um, you know, what would happen? Uh, you know, I know that you ran last year. Uh, you know, what was the protocol for COVID or, 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 or if someone got COVID? Yeah, we, we've run for two years now. Um, and we, we have still followed a lot of the COVID, COVID protocols that were recommended and that when we're, we do try to keep people in sort of their, their pods, you know, so each unit uh, are younger, by the way, we are separated into four units, younger girls, older girls, younger boys, older boys. And when they're in those units, they don't mask, but when they're intermixing, uh, like getting ready to go into the dining hall, that sort of thing, we do ask people to put their mask up. Um, uh, the kids are tested upon arrival at camp and then four days later and and if everyone is free uh, uh, has has a negative test then we we drop our we drop our our protocols unless somebody pops up and we did have a couple of of staff um test positive and they had to go into we have a a, a newly renovated health center um really pretty state-of-the-art they have their own private rooms and bathroom and and uh, they had to spend five days you know, they're uh, isolating and then uh, and then we'll write back out. So if someone tests positive, then we tighten things up a little bit. But we've had a really good uh, run these last two years. Um, Excellent. Excellent. Very good. Um, all right. So um, if people are really keen to interview with Camp Homeward Bound, what's a what give us some inside scoop? What do you look for when you're interviewing? What, what's some of your uh, key things that you look for? Well, you know, obviously you can see, you know, Kieran is an example. We are one of the camps that do look at 18 year olds and it's really about what have you done in your life? You know, what, if you're, uh, you know, what, what's your, uh, what's your personality? Are you, are you playful? I think, you know, I mentioned that earlier. We want somebody who uh, can, can get out and, and, and enjoy playing uh, that and, and also uh, compassion. 
Um, you know, it, it does help if you've worked with children before. It's not totally necessary, but having some interaction with groups, um, whether it's in sports or that sort of thing. My ideal candidate is somebody who's gone out and done some volunteer work, you know, um, and you guys match me up with some really good folks in that uh, someone who has worked maybe with a, with a, um, a challenged population makes it even better. Those aren't all mandatory. Sometimes we just talk to someone and we just feel like, I mean, Kieran, he was green, you know, and we talked to him and we said, I think this guy is going to be really, really great with the kids. And boy, we nailed it. You know, here he is, you know, <laughs> all these years later. Um, but those, those are really the main thing. And the, and the last thing is, is that, um, it, it, that they're, they're ready to learn from being challenged, you know, that they're not just coming to have fun. It, it is fun, but um, they realize it's, there's gonna be some challenges, but there's also a lot of growth that comes with that. So when someone is coming to me and it, they don't have to be a social worker, it could be anyone that just says, you know, I, I, I wanna, my personal growth, I, I wanna work on that this summer. That's also a real plus. So I've just told everyone what they need to tell me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, in, in, inside scoop, so it's all good. <laughs> uh, excellent. Um, and uh, we heard from Kieran about how he grew and, and, and has grown and, and changed. Um, obviously, you know, you've been in the camping industry for for a couple of years, uh, um, yeah, just a few. Um, uh, you know, what have you seen with your international staff? Um, how have they grown and changed from having a summer at Camp Homeward Bound? Because I feel um, knowing you and, and knowing the staff that we've had go there before and, and the kids that come to camp, it can be challenging, but it's probably one of the most, I hear from everyone, it's one of the most rewarding um amazing experiences that, that they've ever had. How have you seen that them grow over that time from that first day at camp to their last? Yeah, the first day at camp. And you know, it, it, it's painful sometimes to see the first that first session when it starts because it's like deer in the headlight, you know, and it's like, oh my gosh. And then by the end, I think it's the the inner strength that people gain. I, I and and I experienced that working with inner city kids the first time. I, I went back and people said, boy, you've changed. There was a different confidence level um, and and I see that in, in our staff a lot their their confidence uh, rises um, ability to communicate sometimes they come on and they don't really know how to handle maybe uh, a disagreement with a coworker or how do you handle a, a maybe a talk with a particular child and so communication skills um, are, are really uh, improved you know obviously, excuse me the, the leadership skills and team you know the, the leadership skills whether it's um, becoming more organized, um, learning how to problem solve, because there is a lot each day, there's, there's things that you have to, you know, somebody's acting a certain way, and I'm not saying acting badly, but they're, act, they're different that day, and you have to sort of figure out, well, what's going on to help that, so those interpersonal skills really, they help anybody in any area, uh, you know, if you're, unless you're working alone on a computer in an office, um, I think, you know, you have to work with others and, and that really helps them um, uh, be better um, employees going forward. Um, and the other thing we found is we've had people come and they've changed their whole direction in what they decided to do in life, um, you know, uh, and, and usually it's, it's geared more towards working with kids or wanting to do something where they're more giving but sometimes it's someone who thought they wanted to work with kids and they go you know i did that but maybe i need to think of something else <laughs> but for the most part it's the other way around we have people switching from they thought they were going to go into business and they ended up going into social work so yeah. um you know there's there's a lot of that yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Look, um, for anyone that is super keen on um, interviewing with Camp Homeward Bound, and, and I recommend even just jumping on to have a chat with you um, about camp and, and your experience, uh, it's a really easy process. Just go to ccusa.com.au or .co.nz. There's a big apply button. So just click on that and you start your application form with CCUSA for the Camp Counselors USA program. After that, one of our staff members will reach out and communicate directly with you. We'll walk you through the steps. 
um, definitely let us know if you are keen to jump on. Um, we have penciled in the possibilities of interviews on next Friday the 9th with Bev, uh, starting on in the morning, uh, nice and early um, our time, which is uh, sort of, you know, um, afternoon, early evening for you in New York. Um, so it's quite an easy process. And, and uh, the staff here will definitely help and work you through that process. Look, I, I, and I'm, I'm going to throw you in the deep end here, Karen, as well. But look, if anyone does have any questions or they're maybe a little hesitant, you know, um, Kieran, would you be okay if we sort of passed on your details for them to have a chat with? Yeah, sure. That's fine. That's not a problem at all. I'm happy to talk to anyone anytime about camp. That's so fine. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. Um, okay. Um, just checking in, Isaac, did you have any questions um, about camp, camp Homeward Bound that you want to ask Bev or, or Kieran? Yeah, just uh, about like um, what kind of activities would like you do if it was like a rainy day in that like, you know, that sometimes, you know, things can't go ahead because, you know, it's been raining and like, you know, what activities, but just what, what do you plan if like something like that happens? Sure. Uh, so uh, first of all, we, we try to do everything in the rain that we do in the sun, but with a raincoat on. But obviously there are times that you can't do that. You can't. Uh, swim or boat when it's lightning and that sort of thing. So we, we do we do switch activities inside. We've got a, a couple of very large, um, oh, we think they're very large um, pavilion type buildings that um, we can do things inside and we switch to either, you know, usually we don't have several days of rain. That's very unusual. If it's just a day, then we try to do uh, games and activities, maybe something like minute to win it, you know, sort of fun activities to, to fill that that time um, and keep them happy. But we try to keep out in the rain, keep outside. We don't melt, so we just do as much outside as we can. Excellent. Yeah, look, some awesome. of my favorite, thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> some of my favorite activities, Bev, have been rain days, you know, going out, mud hikes, you know, mud stomping, puddle sliding, you name it, you know, the kids are in it. And I think it's all about your own camp counselor mentality you'd lead by example and they'll be in there and and uh that that that's key and you know i i know that to this day i speak to some of my campers who are now adults who still remember some of our funnest you know we we i remember a, a mud stomping hike that we went on and i still have kids that um, are now adults that remind me about those times and it, it's pretty amazing so you know the things that stick with them is just just re really blows your mind so it's great so yeah, um, and, and really the only activities that we can't move inside, that we can't do the activity inside is really swimming, boating, and biking, because we have a, a gym that they can do sports in, and, and uh, all the other activities have a, a shelter that they can use, so um, so we're, we're pretty adaptable on that, but good question, Isaac. Excellent. All right. Well, look, um, what we might do is uh, we might wrap this up. Um, any last um, words of advice um, for coming to work at Camp Homeward Bound, Bev? Sure. You know, I, I, I did want to add this. I know I've mentioned that our kids can be challenging, but for the most part, they're just really loving kids and they get titles. They get titles of, you know, um, underserved, abused, um, you know, that sort of thing. But they're some of the most intelligent, resilient, fun, creative kids that you could ever work with. And sometimes just those titles sort of scare people away. And I would say, um, um, don't be afraid, you know, to, to come and work with our kids. If, if that's where your heart is, um, you know, um, even if it is your first time working with the kids, we can walk you through that. So um, I hope, I hope you consider us. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It is going to be one of the most rewarding experiences, definitely, um, at Camp Homeward Bound. And like, like I said, I'll, I'll mirror that. I speak to a lot of our returning staff, including Kieran, um, for many, many years, who have been singing Camp Homeward Bound's um, praises and just how much they've changed and and been supported by you. Um, you know, you are. Um, for those who don't know, Bev is a kind of a bit of an icon in the American camping industry. So um, yeah, so it, it's uh, it, it you you. you definitely going to be under amazing tutelage uh having bev as your director there so um definitely, definitely. thank you thank you for those kind words snowy we try we, we try <laughs>
Excellent. Well, look, um, I'm going to um, just sign off here. But um, if you do have any questions, please reach out to your local CCUSA office. We'd love to talk to you more about the program um, and, and walk you through the steps and, and potentially, you know, get you lined up for an interview um, with Bev uh, next week. That'd be great. Hope to see you.